trying to get you out the way so we can get things going. We was having some technical difficulties. Yep, I'm going to put some chapstick on my lips. Don't lube me up nothing. Fuck you talking about? Lube me up, Chuck. Oh, yeah, don't, don't, don't talk about all that. Welcome to... Hey, babe. Welcome Hello. to episode MTMJ podcast with the wife. I said, welcome to episode yeah. MTMJ. Yeah, welcome to the another episode of MTMJ podcast <laughs> with the wife. Episode one thirty six. This has been a five week. Like they they started the new year off right, but we started the new year off right too. Celebrated our son's birthday. Woo! Oh, he twelve. Yeah, that preteen life is crazy. Oh, then I gotta run back to ghetto life in two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. <coughs> two mm, weeks, mm, mm, mm. baby. Got a little one's birthday. Yeah, she ready. She more vocal than her brother is, so she don't want to do too much. As always, like mother, like daughter. Whatever. We got a trip. Yeah, I do. She gonna fly. Yeah, that was definitely fun, though. Yesterday, you know, enjoying our time. Oh, we did an entire eight-hour shift. Like, shit. But it didn't even seem... I never got to the point where I was like, all right, y'all, you ready to go? Yeah. I didn't even get to that point. I did. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I ain't about to lie. <coughs> I kept thinking about that long-ass ride and, like, me being tired and then me getting home and me allowing, allowing God to ruin something that the devil wanted me to do. <laughs> oh, the devil wanted you to do it. But no, God, said, God wanted me to do it, but no, the devil. No. <laughs> did I say it right? Nah, you said it right. God stopped you from doing something the devil wanted you to do. The devil wanted you to get some action, but God said, absolutely not. You need to go to sleep because you got to get <laughs> go to work. Quote a scripture to your wife. I swear to God, like, I, I don't know if any of them have been in this situation where they just start thinking. Of course you've been in a situation where you like, right before you about to, you know, hit your climax, you're like, thank you, Jesus. You just yell out, thank you, Jesus. Like, you just yell that out. But no one has been in the situation I believe I was in. I stand on the bridge right by myself. No followers, no one is jumping with me. I took this look, this leap of faith. Really, I literally took a leap of faith in a moment when I was supposed to take a leap of heathenness. Oh. I don't know what was going on with me. It wasn't meant. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I swear to God, though. <laughs> I really did believe I heard you say, recite a scripture, not <laughs> which position. I don't even know how I correlated correlated the two. <coughs> I can't believe I parted my goddamn lips to say oh that. Oh my gosh, I'm In the head. moment, I swear to God, and this is some real shit, in the moment when I said that and she told me, nah, you're not getting none, I felt embarrassed. Because it was like getting your first piece of pussy with a new female and you, you come fast. It was one of those situations. She was like, uh, it's a no. And I was like, oh, on the inside, I just could not say nothing. <laughs> I could not say nothing. But today I realized there was a positive that came out of all this. And Lord, we worship you first, but the positive wasn't you. The positive was that my wife needs to understand I will do anything to get the pussy. <laughs> Even if it requires me to start reciting a scripture. Oh. And let's get this wow. podcast started. Ooh. Oh, shit. I have improperly diagnosed myself as being an introvert. And one day after careful thought and consideration, I realized I am not an introvert. I just don't like being around everybody. There are certain groups of individuals who deplete you and drain you whenever you are in their company, as opposed to saying that I'm introverted. I realized that they were just interrupters of my energy and my peace. 
and I needed to remove myself to a higher level of reciprocity in a different environment where I could distribute and leave fueled. As I'm aging, I've learned I'm not an introvert. I'm just much more selective in the company that I keep. The less you require of me, the more I enjoy that environment. The more that I can relax and be myself, the more peaceful I feel when I'm there. There are certain environments that I'm required to be in due to professional obligations or labor assignments. And in such case, I'm going to be the best that I can be to fulfill my responsibility and duty. But there are some places I ain't got to be. And because I don't want to be there, it doesn't mean that I'm an introvert. It could just mean that I'm wise in how I spend my time and who I spend my time with. That shit hit, didn't it? Yeah. And that described me perfectly. I already said you make time for who and what you want to make time for. That shit hit differently, though. When I heard this, I say, man, and Pastor YPJ, he always coming through with the motivational keys. And it's it's always something. It's like the spirit position is in my timeline. Because before before following him yesterday, I wasn't following him. We're going to get your mic right. Because it, it keep falling every week. But anyway, I wasn't following him prior to, uh, oh my God. <laughs> I wasn't following him prior to, uh, you know, coming up with this motivation yesterday. And then it just popped, just popped up. It's just like, God knows when it's something I need to hear to reassure, okay, like what I'm doing is okay. Like, even if even if I th- I think sometimes it can be born, I understand that like God is only gonna position me around the people that bring me value and bring me joy, versus versus just being around people who's gonna waste my time. So I think me personally, I think that was perfect, and um, I hope I don't disappoint you. Everybody has seen it at uh, Shannon Shop. <laughs> and, uh, Cat Can't episode and um upon last view as long as the drink was pouring my man was running over let my man tell her the drink wasn't what it was that's what he said he said the drink the drink ain't what had him turned like that it was he just wanted to tell the truth now as we record this podcast this episode has done 25 million views Remember okay. when I first told you it was at 10 million. So 25 million in three days, that's crazy. But by the time this video really seeps into the atmosphere, it's probably gonna do at least a hundred. I said that. Because like Cat Williams just went down, just went down the line. I, I said mean, he, he was shot entertaining. Yeah, he shot fires at anyone. Who was willing to uh, My man gave, take a I'm an entertainer, so I'm here to entertain. I ain't hear bullshit, jack jive. It is what it is. So in the beginning, mm-hmm, go on, babe. I'm sorry. So one of the one of the things I kind of was throwing back in the beginning that I kind of told you is when you look at this type of interview, where it feels like. Cat Williams attack. Everybody. Everyone, but mostly a lot of people who has who he who he's had on his show before. Whether it's Ricky Smiley. Um, I don't think Kevin Hart's been on there, but uh he had Steve Harvey. Well, who's your on his, <coughs> uh Oh Shannon. Shay, yeah, the, Shannon. Oh, oh, okay. I was like Kevin yeah. show. Yeah, okay. he had um Steve Harvey. Um Michael Blackston was on there. Um, what's the one that played Bernice? Ricky Smiley. Um, he had a lot of shots for the Kings of Comedy, but he didn't shoot no shots at DL. He loved DL. He said, big props to DL. DL is, you know, solid for him. But he said, Steve Harvey had to take off a, a, that two pair every day. <laughs> so, so. For a while, I mean, you possibly think when someone comes on the show like that and they're, you know, Shannon said one of the things he set out for this episode and this interview was the interview for three hours. Oh. That's, that was his time frame. Um, 
So be- because Shannon comes from from her, you know, daily talk show, where is it first take or Fox, Fox yeah, FS1, the people that he, I guess, employs kind of come kind of follow that same, like, let's follow a script or at least attempt to try to follow a script. Let's get into, like, introducing the people to the, my guests. Then you start building up to the messiness. But according to Shannon, um, he was going on on his cue card <coughs> and he was ready to start breaking down these questions. And he said, Mike just, I mean, Cat Williams just went off. He just started talking about you let motherfuckers come on my show. I mean, on your show, and just fear lies and just say this about but me. You didn't do nothing. He didn't know it was a lie. But and that's why I kind of felt like Shannon allowing him to come on his show and speak his truth. Speak his truth against people. <laughs> Shannon claimed to be real cordial with. That's what the problem is. And. And I believe, like, with with situations like that, an uh, episode like this could make a break, Shannon. Uh, it could be positive as as it relates to Cap saying, like, man, you give people a safe space on your show to come and tell the truth. Or it can be, oh, uh, I, I might reach out. I might reach out. I might reach out to these specific people to come on an interview. And now they might not want to get interviewed because of, they think you are messy. Mm-hmm. But after watching the video, after after actually going and doing a little research and watching the YouTube, Shannon Shop gave Cat Williams multiple op- opportunities to walk <coughs> himself away from the edge of that bridge. And Cat Williams was not trying to like not jump. He wanted to go and conquer his bucket list. Oh, he wanted all the smoke. And Shannon Shop he let him. Not Shannon care. Shop got. It got so bad that Shannon said, oh, man, this is a lot. I need to take another drink. And but I, and guess I, what he didn't do? Edit it out. He didn't edit nothing. <laughs> he said that episode was two hours and 45 minutes, and he kept all two hours and 45 minutes on mm-hmm. the show. And I also like the fact that, and this is where I said, okay, you know, there's a lot of people questioning um, Shannon's interviewing skills. And I'm like, okay, we live in an age where content is everything. And you got to be able to separate yourself from everybody else. It's a new year. There's new new metrics in place now for 2024. Um, a lot of the old stuff that you had in 2023 have now been reset. So now it's time for me to come out here and separate myself from the pack. And that's why he said the day before he released this in, uh, interview that it was going to break the internet. And it did exactly what it was. And I wouldn't have believed half that shit if so many of you mothers suckers <laughs> hadn't responded so goddamn quickly. And everyone was responding with love, which tells me there is a part two of this there that that what? there may be even more information that could be released and you are afraid that cat williams has the ammo to take your career out oh because it's just, just too much love <laughs> the only person what? that said dude you a comedian i'm from the streets which trick daddy but for the rest of you people it was just mayhem you people like ricky smiley for instance god loves you my son <laughs> but ain't nobody about to sit here and talk about my dead kid and families involved and all this shit. And I'm going to sit on camera and break down and cry and do all that. I'm Man, because families are involved, I'm not going to go back at him. Please. Cat Williams brought attention to all you mother suckers that wasn't getting attention just like him. Everyone is trending today. Everyone is winning. So I also tell you this, man. That's what Faison Remember when said. I told you, I said, I think he doing this because he got something coming out. I said he had a tour. Yeah, you said he had a tour already happening. No, 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 buddy. That brother just announced a new tour with new acts. Not new acts, but a new lineup of comedians. 
Oh, because he got a show in is it Jersey? And somewhere all you 25 million March. people who watch this interview. And, and here's the thing. We just looking at 25 million people, right? We need to think about all the retweeters, all the subs, sub tweeters, all the recreators, all us creators, all the bloggers, all the snappy ass messy people who are <laughs> making their own videos with their own reaction to it. We all doing it. We all are winning because of your boys. So let me tell you how that sounds. That sounds amazing. That's amazing for us all. That is amazing for everybody. We can all win off of him exposing every single one of you. But I want to particularly <laughs> focus on a couple of people that responded. Because I think <laughs> there is joy and love in all. And there's messiness and laughter and more. Let's start with Ludacris. Ludacris... He said you's a part of an Illuminati. <coughs> and you know what you wanted to do? Make a song. Get in the studio and write a nursery rhyme. Mm -hmm. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He introduced your family into a beef that you two didn't even have. <laughs> and you decided, I'm Luda. Picky, pat, patty, whack, give a dog a bone. Because if I throw that bone, Luda going to pass it back to you. What? That's what he did. <laughs> I'm sure. It did not sound like that. How you think it sounds? <laughs> my heart is always on my mind. Like Snoop's cannabis shredder. I'm always on my grind. And throw a shade because niggas can never take my shine. I bring my watch and collection on my jet. Let me take my time. Like fine wine, I'm aging like Benjamin. Top five, I'm worth mentioning. Bring me rappers, I'm lynching them. See the pendulum swing, Jesus with diamond thorns. Ludacris swallowed in Gucci linens when I was born. That would have been good if you were actually, go actually going against a rapper. <laughs> what? Satan, Satan, uh, Satan. You let the devil use you. You should have did like everybody else did. Man, I'm 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 just giving peace and love to Cat Williams. I don't know what's going on with the brother. He don't give a damn. That's but just I'm, what it was. I'm gonna pray for you. What? He's not he's a, he's acknowledging it without acknowledging it. <laughs> All right, that's one. Then Michael Blackston. You got to make a joke out of it. <laughs> that mother sucker <coughs> nigga. Everything. That's what he called him. You mother sucker. He said, Cat Williams know what he's doing. And I'm paraphrasing. He's like, man, mm. Cat Williams is the best promoter. He was like, man, he will use you to promote himself. Yeah, that's what he did. Um, What's the dude that used to be big and that he's not small no more? I think That's I put his big and not small. Huh. What's his tag on name? Dang it. I and I ain't put it on the notes, but he said, he said, man, you know, he said, man, Cat Williams is a smart guy. You know? I wanna know who you're talking about. You know, you got to have some balls to do what Cat Williams did. Are you trying to sound like him? Yeah. You oh. got you got to have some balls to do what Cat Williams did. I don't know if I would have did it, but I'm gonna tell you what I do know. I made money with all them niggas he talked about, and I'm gonna continue to make money with these niggas. I ain't got no problem with it, <coughs> but I ain't mad at Cat Williams for doing what he did. I think you know what's worse is you motherfuckers didn't have to respond to him. You just giving him more life, and that's me paraphrasing. Yep. But here's here's another one. I thought Cat. I thought Kevin Hart was gonna take the high road, and initially, he did take the high road, and then he changed course last night during the Philadelphia and Knicks game. So, like um, the NFL, Peyton Manning and his brother has like a little telecast. They call it the Manning cast. Now Kevin Hart has one with the NBA. It's called Unplug, Unplugging, or something like that. They roasted Cat Williams doing the live show. 
Here you go. New York Knicks. I don't know if you guys know this, but Cat Williams bought the Knicks. He definitely bought the Knicks. He bought the Knicks, yeah. and uh, it's rumored that he took the Knicks back. Returned him with a receipt. That's yeah, you it. can do that. You yeah. didn't know you could do the that. The first person ever did. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. they gave him a thirty-day policy. Oh, yeah, that, well, he bought a receipt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait. Fact about the New York Knicks. He made the team. He played. He, he played. Oh, he played. He played. He played with them. We know he's fast. They say he's fast. Yeah. He run a sub. One of the fastest. Three point nine. He's <laughs> three nine. He figured out how to play basketball for reading all the books. Three thousand of them. Three thousand of them. Yeah, that's two a day. That's six years old. That's two a day. Oh, it's good. He said that nigga bought the right. dick. Um, Kevin Hart and his boys. I'm, I'm be honest with you, that shit was corny. That shit Kevin Hart <laughs> then was doing was corny. I was trying to find a bright spot in it. If you got cooked the way you got cooked, and that man accused you of being a plant, uh, in in the media space, and, and to get to be honest with you, right? In my opinion, I think that was going a step too far. You can't get mad at Kevin Kevin Hart. Because he don't want to be a one trick pony, you can't be mad at uh, Steve Harvey because he don't want to be a one trick pony. You can't you can't be mad at said said is is said had the opportunity to be on two sitcoms that just keep playing and keep playing. Blessings. That's what everyone works hard for. I don't think none of these guys got into being a comedian just to be a comedian. And that if and if that's what you want to do, so be it. But if like you said, there's certain roles that you wouldn't be a part of because they had too much homophobic nature to it. And I understand that, right? And to each his own, like you allowed, you allowed to feel how you want to feel. And if you don't want to associate yourself with certain situations, you also can't get mad at um, Ricky Smiley for his Bernie's role that he created. Look, think about this. He is getting paid for being a creator of Bernie's, whether he was or wasn't. And in every opportunity he gets, he understands <coughs> that he comes in asking for a little bit different because he decided he wanted to be Bernie's. You can't get mad at Steve Harvey because Steve Harvey decided that he wanted to take his brand and his situation a whole different direction. He cultivated and built his fan base, just like you built your fan base and whatever you like to do. He decided to do what he wanted to do. You can't get mad at him. You can't get mad at, Bar at Martin Lawrence because Martin Lawrence decided to play a female way before you thought about doing whatever you were doing in acting. That's just what these guys decided to do. That don't mean that they should be looked at any differently. It's just like we've been raised in this 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 homophobic uh, community. And, and even me, I can say, like, I, I feel a certain way sometimes. But I think it's only when um, I feel like I'm being treated differently as it relates to those people, those that community. <laughs> so, like, I, but I don't think you should judge none of these guys for deciding, okay, like, what, what Steve Harvey's wig or whatever he was, too fake, got to do with what he want to do. But one thing I do agree with. It was with an it, image he had to keep up. Exactly, but that's a part of his brand and what he chooses to do. You know, ain't nobody clowning on you for being cat in the hat. <laughs> My man used to wear a perm. That's what I'm saying, and it's a and it's like curl. you know, yeah, pimp. That's all it is. Yeah, and and that's the persona we've got from him ever since Friday. You know. And 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 a lot and a lot of times you get these roles and it follows you for the rest of your life, and that's okay. Sometimes that that body of work that you put in allows you to be able to do what you're doing <coughs> as a comedian. Same with Kevin Hart. Like I still want to be a comedian, but I want my brand to be able to reach all walks of life and not just the black people. No, it's building generational wealth. Yeah. So you gotta branch out and try other things. Uh, you you can't be a one trick pony. So like I think you know as it relates to people dressing up, I noticed like dude, um the co the co um star from Big Mama's House one and two. I recently saw him on a podcast, and he said to do that that role, he 
he wouldn't have done it if he wasn't led by God. And some people, <coughs> that is the direction. Same with Tyler Perry. If God didn't lead him to want to be a stage actor and a producer, director, a writer, and all that other good stuff, he wouldn't own that studio. And he wouldn't be in a position to change other people's lives. You know what I mean? So why you want to hate on some of these people, these particular, these, these same particular people that you hating on, or, or you just giving the truth on, are doing some of the same acts that you may be doing in your life and theirs. And because they don't choose to just use com uh, being a comedian to go in that, to reach their light or reach what they're trying to do, doesn't necessarily mean anything less. But I'm going to tell you what it does mean. You niggas need to stay away from that nigga. You can't be nothing <laughs> around him because he going to tell. His truth is truth. Uh, if you get on another podcast talking about, about him, he going to break the internet, the internet again. He don't got no problem with telling on none of you niggas. And <laughs> all you niggas better watch your back because he said a lot of shit. He also said... Harvey Weinstein tried to suck his dick in front of all his people inside his little uh his little office, and I ain't bleeping nothing. I'm saying what I'm saying, but you know why? Because he said just what like he, he said. said he turned down fifty million to party with Diddy. Then he said Dave Chappelle ain't turned down uh the fifty million that he said. He said it was something else. It was a bigger bag, and because they decided mm. to change on that bigger bag, he walked away. You giving too many people businesses away. A lot of people say, man, they, it is what it is. There's certain things I just don't want to tell the public because it hurts their, it hurts um, whatever their position is. But you, you, you are just up. giving everybody tea. And share the shop. all old wounds. Like oh, the scab boy. has scabbed over. New skin has grown. Like, this man is digging up bodies. My man pulled down every, <laughs> in the scene, what he fell to realize is, though, like, what if he can't, what if he can't fight? If if they was to do a celebrity boxing match between Kevin Hart and and Mike App, I mean Cat Williams, he get beat up. I don't think he'll do it. Yeah, he will if the bag big enough. But we gonna watch him it. get boo bop. <coughs> he gonna get boo bopped all upside his perm. I don't with think he'll do it. his cat in the head on. I don't think he'll do it. And and no disrespect to Cat Williams, I've said before to my wife, I think he's an amazing comedian. I'll say this though. The last time he really was funny as shit was back when Trump was in office. It's been a while, brother. And if this is the way that you want to introduce, reintroduce yourself, because you know there's about to be another presidential uh, election coming up soon, and you want to introduce yourself this way, so be it. He did also talk about him being on drugs and the drug abuse, the drug abuse, and the narrative. Of people <laughs> the snap, what? The drug abuse. Can we get off of this? Because you was just. <laughs> no, we gotta, we gotta. Yeah, we, 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 we feel like we don't fully unpack it. Uh, well, there's nothing to unpack. He laid everybody ish out. He said what he said, and for anybody that's going to comment, you're putting a better in his back for him to continue releasing more. And with other people, it don't even have to be that same person. I think the only person that he'll keep going tit for tat with is Kevin Hart. But I don't think anybody else, like if 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 anybody else says anything that puts him in a position that he felt the need to say something, then he'll say it. But I think he basically said what was needed to be said, and he's like, and now what? Y'all got to fit for yourself. Y'all got to speak up to this. And if you don't speak up to it, you know how everybody is. Everybody is already going to say, oh, you did it. Nobody going to think anybody's innocent. It sound good. Yeah, it's 80% true to all this. Immediately, especially when you have people like Columbus Short and shit who come out and say, yeah, I can contest to that because um, who was it? He, it was somebody. But the Cedric, yeah, he was like Cedric. He sat next to them or something. And they moved. Oh, yeah, whispered, and next thing you know, they asked yeah, him to move. Yeah, asked him to move stuff. <laughs> just, <clears throat> the whole dynamic is just the more people keep saying stuff, the more that the people he talked about is going to get looked at differently. And if they don't speak on it or say anything on it, some people may 
feel some type of way. And then some people just don't care. But anything for clickbait, clout, promo, he did it. So how do you feel about um, uh, actresses and black entertainers that go a little above and beyond when it comes to like what they sh- what they deserve versus what they're getting? That's like Taraji. She yeah. now turns to like it seems like she wants like a diva type situation. Like, I mean, I understand you feel like you should be do this or owe that, but if you're not getting it, don't do it. But it's like you're in a position where you can't turn it down because. You got people to pay. You got a lifestyle to keep up with. Okay, there was a report that um, um, the Color Purple sent everyone a rental car. For them to drive themselves back and forth. And she said that's a like insurance liability. Like, for them to have to drive themselves through Atlanta or whatever. Um, You know, they should get a driver. Same thing that no, can happen with the driver. she said she should have a driver. Yeah, and they said if you should have a driver, then everybody's going to want to have a driver. She was like, okay, we'll give everybody a driver. And she was saying that half of the stuff people don't know is that most of the stuff that they got is because she said something. And if she wouldn't have said nothing, they'd have been fine with what they had. That's what it's given. Like, everybody was excited and happy for what they had to be on a set around amazing people. It gave that she was excited and happy to be around a bag. And what kind of bag can she get from this legendary movie title? Because the movie was uh, uh, goddamn musical. But I could But it was based I, off the stage. <coughs> thing, so that would have told you that it's a I possibility. Didn't go see that, but I'm just saying, like, the dynamic of the whole situation. People who joined in and on it was like, I get to be around Taraji. You get what I'm saying? I get to be around Fantasia. I get to be around people that I look up to as an idol. Yeah, I'm a celebrity, but they're like my celebrity. You get what I'm saying? But then you had Taraji who's like, yeah, I'm around on these amazing women, but what the bag look like? But I'm still gonna do it, but you're not happy. So, you know, some things you just gotta stay at, like, uh, tips on staying on business. If it ain't what you're looking for, don't do it. And if you can't get, that's just like a job. You work, 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 because you know you're working to survive, pay the bills, you know, but you're not happy, then you're not satisfied. So you try to find something else, but in the meantime, you're still going to take, keep what you got. You get what I'm saying? To not lose out. But then it's the time when you just like, Nah, I ain't doing it until something good come. But if you're not in that position to be able to do that and live that life, it's like, what's her name? Elise Neal, McNeil, whatever it said. Elise Neal. It's jobs out here. They may not pay what you feel like you deserve. And that, no one's going to pay what you feel like you deserve if it's not you paying you. And that's just real. I look at it like this. It's certain... It's certain, I, I guess you got to understand when you bite enough more than you can chew, I guess it relates to Raj, Rashad, to Raji. It's, it's almost like, okay, I'm going to go to this network and I'm asking for X amount of dollars to be able to do this and then pay my staff and then do this and do that. But then it gets to the point, okay, you understood what safety was going to be like before you signed up for this role. So you had the opportunity in that moment to decide whether you wanted to take this role or don't take this role. You can't now, now, after you don't sign up for this role, see where they're doing this at. I'm sure you already knew where they were going to be shooting this movie at. Um, You knew what crime looks like. You knew that, (coughs) okay, if I'm going to be doing X, Y, and Z, I'm going to need security. So let let me put all those provisions in place and also understand, okay, how can I make my money work for itself? Or how can I make sure that um, I'm not uh, I'm not in a potential uh, insurance liability because X, Y, and Z wants me to drive a rental car. You could have you could have got whatever rental car you wanted to. You could have got a rental car and then got a driver, or you could have did Uber Black. There's multiple ways that you could have saved money for yourself and your team, and not seem like you was a uh, 
what's the word when you like when somebody's doing too much or big headed or doing too much? Well, like you said, not and not being a diva. So 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 now she's uh, now Oprah scheduled an interview with her. Um, <coughs> but supposedly her Oprah got like some kind. Of also stuff. heard that. I mean, um, I mean, because Oprah is is the director and creator of the color purple, that she should take a cut out of her whatever she's making, she can she can forego her writer's credit or her director's credit or her producer credit to ensure that all the uh, actors are paid appropriately. No, that's just not how the business works. And most black entertainers in the uh, industry of acting understand exactly what they're signing up to. Or signing up for this ain't something that just happened. Taraji's been a a, a a mega star for years, so whatever issues now that is going on, it ain't something that just started. I, when Monique was out there irritating the shit out of us and getting on our goddamn nerves and attacking all these people that you claim um, are just hitting you upside your head, where were you? You were still doing all your movies. <laughs> You still was working with the dude that she was complaining about. You feel me? So now it's like the people that were actually and been talking about this, there are people before you that have been uh, arguing about uh, equal pay for women or black actresses versus black actors. Like this, it's, this is nothing that happened or just started in 2023. It's something that's been going on for decades and decades. And just because your ass is whining now doesn't necessarily mean it's going to change. Like Elisa Neal said, you have to put in your contract and get whatever you can when you can get it. And you got to take the roles that benefit you and that can properly pay you. You know, in the moment you can't, to be honest, it, it, sometimes you can't just be thinking about everybody because the, the more the story is, no one was thinking about you when Monique was doing what she was doing, and you wasn't thinking about her when, <laughs> when you're doing what you're doing. Because if if it was so bad, and and, and things were just going so upright, and you just so sad, and you just want to break down every chance you get, all you mother suckers would have been doing your thing together, and you could have all made the changes. But y'all let Monique down on that hill by herself. And now you about to die on that hill by yourself. Because eventually, they going to get tired of hearing you just like they got tired of hearing her. <coughs> she sat there and fussed for years. It took her three or four years to get her Netflix special. She did the Parkers over 25 years ago. And she's still fighting for money she ain't got. You do the math. The Parkers is on Netflix. Mm. You do the math. And I'm trying to support her. I wanted to watch the Parkers multiple times. But she not getting that check for it. But she ain't getting that check, so you say. I'm, I say it to myself. I said, myself, mm -hmm. I'm not going to support hey. this. I'm going to stand with Monique. Oh. Now, if I go out and don't watch Acrimony, and uh, if I didn't watch uh, Empire, <coughs> and I felt like I supported you. You ain't never support me. But I've supported you. I think because I think you're an amazing actress. But stop doing too much. Because the niggas will get tired. Now, last week we had a topic that we didn't get to. Um, but the topic was Ray Rice being celebrated by the Ravens. There was a lot of people that was upset about something that happened in 2014 that subtly. Is that a word? What? Okay. I'm not gonna. Use, I'm not gonna say it again. I don't think it was a word, but it ended his career. He never played another game after this. After what? After he dragged his, well, it looked like he punched his wife in his face and knocked her ass out cold. Then dragged out the elevator. You know about Ray Rice, bro. Oh. But anyway, Jamel Hill, um, a very uh tomboyish woman. Vocal as hell. She had something to say about it. Of she said, course. I've done a lot of reporting on Ray Rice over the years. And there's very few situations in which I say this. He has truly done the work. Stop right there. Who the f are you? 
A woman. That we need to say that you, who are you to decide that he's done enough work? A woman. Can the work that he's done just be stand on his own? He don't need you to be like, I'm the judge. You've done all your community service hours. You have done the work. I am signing you off for probation now. You've met all the conditions of all the things I gave to you when I came up with my verdict. Stop that goddamn yawning. <laughs> Thank you. You are now free to be Ray Rice again. No, Jamel Hill, you don't get to say that. <laughs> That's what she said. He's a good person who had a horrific moment. Stop right there. You don't know what the hell was going on between those two when that happened. You don't know how testy she got on his goddamn nerves. You don't know what was going on before we got to actually see them doing what they were doing. So for you to say it's horrific, no, it's a lack, lack of judgment and Ray Rice in the moment not understanding the position he had. But that is horrific because it caused the whole scene to end his career. Okay. But that's horrible. Okay, so let's say a horrible moment. Not that's, a horrific. That's horrific not... would mean he destroyed her ass. He destroyed his career. Okay. But he has done so much to educate young boys. Stop right there. How the hell do you know he's done so much to educate boys? Maybe he posted. Did okay. you look to see if he got if he do any philanthropy and stuff? Yeah, he did a bunch of community stuff. Oh, okay. Stuff. Okay. Oh, so you defending him? Good job. That's what I want. I'm I'm waking you up just a little bit. I'm not That's sleep. You yeah. just dragging and it don't even be dragged. Like Sonia, we, we she are said what she said. She she said? said. Oh no, uh. His <laughs> advocacy work isn't isn't for show. He is proof of the power of growth and healing. Yeah. If Jay-Z good after his shenanigans in the elevator with Solange, this issues like... So, yeah, that's bullshit. Oh. She don't get to say that goddamn shit. I don't she care about none of that shit. Why? She can kick, kick rocks. So what you saying? You say? know what she's saying next? She said, well, if they going to allow Ray Rice to come back and be represented with the Ravens, then the NFL should allow Colin Kaepernick to come back and play quarterback. Oh. And he ain't played quarterback in almost 10 years. Oh. But how you think you're going to come back into the NFL and play quarterback if you sued the NFL and the NFL settled with you? So they paid you to stay the hell away. If they paid you to stay away, why in God's name are they going to allow you to be on another NFL team Blame polit bring politics back into football. Let's read the room, people. Leave the Colin Kaepernick shit alone. I don't think every time a quarterback gets injured and goes down and hurts himself, the first two people you need to be calling to come play quarterback again is RG3 and Colin Kaepernick because they black. No. Can they contribute to the team at this present time in their life? And the answer is hell no. I ain't never been no NFL athlete. But I know Father Time catches up with everyone. <laughs> Did you mother sucker see LeBron yesterday after they lost their fourth game in a row or third game in a row? LeBron was leaning in that chair looking at old as shit. I'm talking <laughs> about the grays in his beard. What normal grays? They were sitting on his shape-up line. The grays were literally just sitting around his shape-up line. I said to myself, so said, huh? So said, hmm? Why the hell does LeBron look so goddamn old? But Father Time will catch you. And I promise you this. If you've been a quarterback for 15 to 16 years, and I say that, elementary, high school, college, NFL, you've already paid 20 years. You took four to five years off. I've not been a pro athlete or a quarterback before, but I know after throwing that ball millions of times, the arthritis that possibly sits in your elbow is just crazy. And if it's not an active arm, you're like Drew Brees. Well, you know, they're going to still. You know what Drew Brees said? What? He can't even throw a football with his right arm no more. Oh. 
He said when he play catch with his kids, he has to throw with his his left. He said about what he was? no longer has the motion of throwing a fucking football. Mm. So why would you monkey ass niggas want to put <laughs> yourself through that situation when you don't have to? Kaepernick is doing whatever he's doing. RG3 is killing it in the media space. Stick to where you're winning at. Don't just come and say, well, you know, I've been training. <laughs> I talked so to a filler. I talked to a in, filler, ref. I talked to a Philadelphia ex offensive lineman. He an OG. He 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 was coaching when I was in high school. And the one thing he told me, you can do as much work off the field and you can do all that bullshit that you like to do. But you don't find out that you in football shape until you put that equipment on. And that is a true statement. Because I remember after not putting that equipment on for a while, I decided to step my foot into semi-pro. I put that equipment on and I felt like I was running with a 200-pound <coughs> woman on my back. It is different. And if you take a lot of time off, it is even harder. Why I had to be a woman? I wasn't about to say a man on my back. That's gay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, woman oh comes God. home to driveway stolen. What? No. They taking everything. Any and everything. You can't have nothing. This lady is trying to sell her house because she already <laughs> put a contract in on a house up the That's block. Right. All for her to go away. And come back and her fucking driveway is gone. So when I saw this story, the right, I initially th- said, what the hell is Sonya posting? And then I opened this shit up and read it and then started scrolling over. Them nigga took all the gravel. The, they not left, the gravel, the concrete. They t- a bulldozer that's what I'm talking about. Her. Listen, <laughs> all you saw was the little uh, the metal plate, metal things that they put down the, uh, prior to putting the concrete over it. So it says a Florida woman in disbelief after returning home to find her entire driveway stolen. It says the thief took place in the theft took place in Orlando last month. It says single she's a single mother who had recently stolen her house, who alerted to a theft through her Ring doorbell app. So see that's the thing about cameras, <laughs> and I've told you, and I've all I've always I every time I see one like in in the parking lots with the Seven Eleven. I said, like, it would make me feel so freaking bad <coughs> and upset that you are sitting behind a desk watching me get boobop <laughs> and robbed. <coughs> and then you think you're going to show up and help me after that? And I'm sitting there like this, waving at the camera. And no one's coming to help. <coughs> I can feel her pain. She is sitting there. <coughs> Out of on town. her ring camera, out of camera, I mean, out of town. And she probably turned that phone to her, her husband. Babe, you won't believe this shit. This nigga's in my yard with a freaking bulldozer snatching my shit stop. up. You better stop. Stop, 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 stop. That's all you hear through the ring camera. No, 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 no. That's all you no. no. I couldn't. They took it all. I mean, they took all Rachel of it. And now it done dropped the value of the house down. $10,000 she's been quoted to replace the concrete. If she doesn't fix the driveway and sell the home in the next two weeks, she'll lose out on the home she's under contract yep. to buy down the road. No one's going to buy this. This brings down the property now. And that just messes it up for me and my family. The family is now trying to scrape together the money to pay for a replacement driveway. They've set up a GoFundMe to help them on that. We're going to put a link to that. Undone. Listen to me. How do you scrape? <laughs> no no punt. The family's trying to scrape together the money. They they definitely wrong. That was a shot on the way out. Because <laughs> they definitely need. That's crazy. Like, I, they take anything. Your car, or nah, they took the driveway and they said it's like a part of a scam. So, I guess they know people try to sell their house and they got money already in on another property. So, it's like, who knows? But that's crazy. And then you gotta pay now. Them motherfuckers that took the driveway need to bring it back. Be honest with you, 
should be that should be a part of uh don't tap your foot on my cheek. <laughs> that should be a part of the homeowners ins uh insurance. You should be able to file a claim for that. You my running? ass running. Why the hell are you running? You high as hell? <laughs> <laughs> and then I ate them crabs, so I'm like itching. Oh my gosh. Hey, don't do that shit. So I'm trying to hold, keep coping. All right, oh. well, let me know when we need to pause. A man oh. who had been denied probation attacked the judge. No, stop it. That wasn't attacking. That was a WWE wrestling match. Oh, I see. So the you judge on the census in Nevada courtroom on Wednesday in a violent episode that was captured on video. The man, Dep, uh, was it Debro? Debray. Reading 30 was in court in Las Vegas for sentencing hearing on Wednesday morning after pleading guilty to attempted battery with sub substantial bodily harm. A spokesman for the 8th District Judge uh, Court said in a statement. But what just happened? Did I, do, did I say too much or did I just add words? No. The fuck is his name? Yeah, like right. Deborah? First of all, <laughs> <laughs> Deborah? What? That's why it's as bad. If you ever follow, if you ever follow WWE, and if you um saw Edge set up his special, his special moves, <laughs> he will wait for you to turn around and spear the shit out of you. That and listen, that man picked up a lot of ground and tackled the shit out of her. She ass. did like this. She, she was really was about to try to run. Her ass he, he, what? he didn't give her an opportunity to get nowhere. He speared the shit out of her, but. What bothered me the most, right, is How that he, he was that even close? allowed to get that close. And she's sitting, she released a statement <coughs> talking about she commend the people who stepped up and she... protect. No, 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 no. You sustained injuries, ma'am. They didn't do their job because their job was not to allow you to get bubop like you did. You got dragged. And, and what makes it so bad, they got a hole on this dude. He still was boobopping you upside the head. And you commend them? Oh, 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 no. Everything needs to be reevaluated. I need the toughest and oh. the strongest people in the courtroom. You, you, I need to you. judge Judy. Sure. Oh, yeah. Fire. <laughs> All of them need to go. And the sad part is, it wasn't even sure <coughs> on this man's butt. It was a, it looked like one of the court workers was helping the sheriff and he was losing bad. He even got boobop. I seen him get clocked upside the head while the dude was clocking the judge upside the head. It uh -huh. just looked bad, though. Oh, All right. Right, whatever. Yeah. Mahomes' brother might escape charges. Oh, it's been a while since we talked about it. So, if it pulls up, a ju a judge attempted or has been attempting a new motion that was filed on Tuesday. It reads that the victim in the case has avoided being served with a subpoena to show up in court. That's because they the family paid her. Um. The state is not speaking uh uh is seeking continuance to continue to serve a, to serve when she has made her lack of cooperation abundantly clear. I <coughs> bet she got paid. She ain't like the chick that was messing with the dude from the Thunder basketball thing. Um they decided that they was gonna uh date and not talk about it, and she still talked about it. No, she moved on. Okay, so good for you, my homes boys, brother. Man, stay out, stay, don't be a creep and don't get good court. Let's move on. Next. You got anything to say about that? Don't get okay. good court. You, that's it? Okay. Oh, um, that just said, but you said cook court. Okay, so Boosie took him and his daughter to the movies. Mm -hmm. Or was it his daughter? Was it his daughter? Or one of his young daughters? Mm -hmm. Okay, he took them to see Color Purple. And he said he felt it like he felt it like it was a lesbian situation. And he feels like now they are. Did he not agenda. see the color purple? The Listen, movie? Maybe he did. But the problem I have is the people that say he needs an intervention. Why? Because of his freedom to speak on how he feels that they are pointing a narrative at our children. And a while back, I said the same thing. I said, like, every show that we were watching at the time felt as if it had to be, everything had to be same sex. 
whether it was man on man or girl on girl. But if he's seen the color purple and he saw that ain't the, the problem there though. It's like you yeah, they didn't touch on it like they touched on it in the movie, but it, it was a highlight. So it's like it was your choice. You shouldn't you didn't have to take the kids. You didn't even have to go. I mean but Lucy gonna have his opinion about every goddamn thing under the sun that child that everybody gonna let him have it on just for him to keep staying relevant. Cause what else is there to talk about? Huh? What what else Lucy got to talk about? <coughs> he got an album? Mm-mm. All he gotta do is nothing. talk about being a dad. Boosie, Boosie chilling. Boosie has an opinion, and he's rightfully so. He said, "Chilling and suing everybody that they use the verse out of his song." If if Boosie feel that people are um, if he feels so, what? Who is this? TSA. I mean, T. S. Madison. Yeah, she. she That's said, a transgender. Yeah, she said, um. Little Boosie, you sat there with your daughter while Chili Daddy took her second child that he fathered and gave it to a pastor and his wife. You sat there with your daughter while Miss Master came and brought her from her daddy at 14. You sat there with your daughter. Okay, we get what she's trying to say. But you got up to leave when you saw Chili finally found love and compassion and some sort of temporary relief from master's prison. Then you try to come to social media and bring the what about the kids man campaign you've been <coughs> on and attempt to use God to justify you and the people who stand with you. Tuh. And they call us delusional. Sir, the character you play in real life is master, the daddy, the pastor, oh. and all other men who abuse Chili in the movie. Silly. I said Chili? Yeah, Silly. <sighs> When was you going to correct me? Because I was trying to figure out what you were talking about. But I was like... Oh. And you have the nerve to finally, I mean, finally be concerned about what a kiss would do to influence your daughter. There is truly some intervention needed in your life to sort out those homosexual demons you're fighting. <coughs> Lucy's homophobic. That's it. That's it. And is something wrong with that? It's nothing wrong with it, but... You don't have to every time. It's Just like seen. white people are racist. Okay, and it is his duty as a father to protect his kid. And what she's saying is, you shouldn't have took him to see it because that's not the only thing in that movie that can possess your child to fall into the wrong hands. Okay. We unpack that. I ain't got no pushback. <laughs> I don't. All right, so wait a minute. Are the lyrics for Walk It Out uh, appropriate for the body of Christ? Man. What does it matter? It does matter. Why? Because you're inviting (coughs) inviting the devil into the Lord's house. Let's see. Do how you do it, walk it out. Walk, 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 walk it out. Say what? I mean, yeah, back, no. She do it with no hands. She stop dropping roll. Yeah. <laughs> she stopping and dropping the roll in the praying. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, so you don't have a no problem with it? She, she do it with no hands. What what about what was she the other it. one he was doing, boo? What's the that one? Oh, they that... swag surf. Yeah. Ooh now. That oh. there. That was the college days. I'm on hypnotic, exotic. Repo- no. no. But he said do it for God, though. Do that's, it for God. That's what he said. I, I, I swear that's what he said. Do but it he for said Jesus. I got a bad bitch beside me. Or oh, I got a bad girl beside me. They don't like it. I mean. She got a hand right behind me. Oh, 
So, man, I got a swag. Oh, no, we need to go to the... Uh -huh. We got to go to all the stuff. I'm on Hypnotic Exotic. The polo on my body. Got a bad girl beside me and her friend right behind me. And I'm swagging and I'm surfing. Uh-huh. So I'm trying to get to the lyrics that they say a don't. Clean like the detergent. What do you say? Off a troll. Yeah, I'm gone. Purple by the zone. Mm hmm They smoking strong. What, what we got over here? I don't know. They could be smoking on a yeah. word. Okay. Pop up in the club with a pocket full of bands. Spin stupid fresh like I'm right up in Saran. Mm hmm yeah. So, so bottles in my hand of prayer I oil. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's why you you're trying to reach these new new age Christians and you know folks that want to go into a, a church where like it's just so in the club throwing beautiful. money up into the collection plate. I know my pastor said like he ain't want to create a church where people be like, oh Lord, thank you Jesus, and all that extra stuff that you do. And the old school churches. So maybe this is just a, a ploy by William Murphy to invite more worldly people into God's house so he can save some souls. There you go. Because that night he saved 125 souls. By swag surfing it and they walked on out of there with the anointing. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hmm. So most parents lose their kids for what Tyreek Hill allowed. And you know how I know? My mother lost her two kids when she allowed them to set our apartment complex on fire. Oh, shit. What? <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Well, you know, Tyree kids accidentally got their hand on a lighter and set something in the house on fire. Normally, when that happens, Child and Welfare Services comes to your home and they want to assess whether the child is living right in your home. So now you have invited those folks into your large mansion that now goes from nine bedrooms to five bedrooms. Of course, for the time being. But it wouldn't be that way if you were watching your kids. What you mean from nine to five? I, they might have lost four bedrooms due to the five. Oh, shit! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> So, yeah, where you been at? I thought you were saying, like, <laughs> they got to be confined to one side of the house so he can watch his kids type situation. I ain't know that they burned down, kaboom, a whole wing of the house. Son, you see what, all, babe, you see what all, I say, son. Look, babe, you see what all that? Look. Who in there? Babe. Like I said, what? us normal people will possibly lose our <laughs> kids for allowing something like that to happen. Who in God's name was watching those kids? Because you got multiple baby mothers. What? So who, who is now getting cussed out by one of your baby mothers? <laughs> Man, <laughs> oh, that's God. crazy. I ain't about to talk about no wife, nobody's wife. But the wife he just married, she don't look like the most responsible. Oh, jeez. She look like she might have been somewhere on, on TikTok being an influencer. Oh. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hey. So, how would you expect me to feel if this happened, babe? Bradley Bill's sons played James Harding's <laughs> Clippers. And um, James Harden was walking into the visitor's locker room and Bradley Bill's wife is seen standing there in a full tight outfit. Yep. 
waiting for him. Not waiting for Brad, waiting for him. But that's the vibe of you. It's like she was waiting for him because as soon as they, they high five, boo, soon like they, so. Now, as soon as they locked, locked and pulled Ooh. away. It's, How would you expect me to feel if that happened? Feel some type of way. What is it, some type of way? Like, the fuck is going on here? Because the look back was like, see you later. But why was she over there? Because that's the locker. The, 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 the families also come through that area. Why was she standing there? She was waiting for James Harden. That's what, what the fuck you waiting on him for? Where was your husband? <laughs> Sit, sitting on the bench. He so ended. why the fuck you went up in your row wherever you were supposed to be at? You steady standing there trying to get a goddamn hand grope. Absolutely. No. Mm-mm. I ain't gonna they tell need you to take a, they need to take a page out of Savannah James book. She don't do nothing with me. Not pictures, not nothing. It's not just certain like, like I, it's a respect factor. And that is giving like real life disrespect because what was you standing there for? And it's crazy because it's like soon as y'all did that, you walked off. It's not like you stood there like you was waiting for somebody else. It gave like you was waiting for him. <laughs> yeah, she she gave it. She for everybody. She for the streets, boo. Yep. She for everybody. She for the streets, my wife said. Oh, see, look, it's going viral. While your man is sitting on the bench with a tank, I mean, with a hoodie on and his, num- his number, <coughs> you are a court being a, a floozy. Ooh. Like, it just, it just look like, like some of you, they like this. Since you won't do it with me, they are like this. Uh-huh. And look how she got a hand on her hip, foot twisted. They locked it. If we locked it, like, yeah. ain't, ain't no, no switching switch up. up. Okay, there you go. You don't don't switch my hand up. <laughs> don't switch my hand. I up. don't. I want to look at it again. And she walks off. She just literally was standing there. The fuck is you waiting on? Who Not Bradley are you waiting on? Wasn't waiting on Bradley Bill because he was nowhere to be found. Because if he was somewhere to be, way to be found, she probably still would have done. And who you thought wasn't gonna see you? You got on that damn bright ass orange. Listen, if Brad wasn't nowhere to be found, she still would have done it. <sighs> she don't got no respect for Brad. She was for the streets before she was with Brad. She was, she was for. She was. I'm gonna say it now. I heard rumors that she used to talk to John Wall. Take with that what you want. She been for the streets. The Bradley Bill John Wall, were they cool? On the same team. He said, you can have my... uh My bench warmer. No, that ain't what I was going to say. When he say. left, he benched her. So he let Bill take off the bench. Put me in, coach. Put me a cup, yeah, yeah. <coughs> he said, put me in, coach. And she said, and let me play. And score all the kids. That's why I asked because stay from down gallery. All right, babe. So we are going to announce the winner of the wig giveaway. The and, wigs. And, because y'all disrespectful. In conjunction folks. with Blitz by JP, JP. we um, have decided to give the wigs away to Gabby. Um, January the 1st. Unfortunately, Gabby's apartment caught on fire due to an electrical fire. Gabby is a mother of six. Um, she has a toddler who has um, a feeding tube and health deficiencies, and they are currently currently displaced um, in a hotel. But um, the great thing about it was... Um, She was very, like, with the circumstances that she's in and everything, she was still very humble. She smiled, you know, and it's just, like, so unfortunate. Um, So she did walk away with both wigs. So the giveaway is done. But congratulations to Gabby. We will post the story. We will also post her GoFundMe. She does have a GoFundMe. 
for those that I would like to contribute, um, if it's clothes, monitoring, you know, anything, I can reach out to her. And uh, yes, congratulations to Gabby. And um, ugh, that sucks. New Year's Day. A lot of New Year off. This place. You and your kids. Everything gone. Like, <laughs> Lord, you wanted me to start fresh, but damn, not this fresh. <laughs> Unfortunate. And it's really crazy and unfortunate because my mother used to live in that building. My mother literally moved out, what, two weeks prior? And my mother lived under her. Mm. <laughs> and she literally moved, yeah, moved out two weeks prior to that. It's great. <coughs> but yes, congratulations to Gabby. And again, we will tag and um, add everything for those who would like to read her story, help contribute, and so forth. Um, those of you who are still in need of a wig, you can still reach out to Jordan with Glitz by JP and buy you one. Okay. And um, that is a wrap. <laughs> we appreciate you for joining a brand new episode of MTMJ Podcast with the Wife, episode 136. Hey, we moving um, on that. We thank you for watching. We thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe, rate, comment, like. share. Um, make sure you go on the merch. I mean, make sure you go on the website and get you some merch. Um, MTMJpodcast.com. Um, and we out. Peace. Until then.